Good day, everyone. This is WR Breaking Stuff from the Walsh Motors Computer Junk Emporium Division, here with part two of the amazing APC Smart UPS 600 adventure. It's the day before Thanksgiving, and I've been fiddling around with this thing a little bit. We got that snow that was originally threatened back on Saturday, but here it is Wednesday, and now it's about 50 degrees out here, and apart from the fact that the ground is wet, you'd never have any idea that it snowed. Welcome to Illinois. If you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes to a few days. <laughs> anyway, folks, to try and get back on subject here, what I have done, I have installed two replacement batteries in this unit. They're just sitting in here loose right now, because it looks to me like putting new batteries in this thing is one of those affairs that requires 18 hands, and so there's no way that I'm going to do, I'm going to be able to do that with uh, one hand holding the camcorder and the other one trying to put the batteries in there while simultaneously avoiding the shorting out of any of this unit's significant electronic components. These particular batteries are not all that new. I actually bought them new probably about two years ago. Intended to put them in a much larger uninterruptible power supply. Never got around to it, and so they've just kind of been bouncing around from place to place over time. Uh, they should still be good though, they should certainly be good enough for a test. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to see if this unit is any happier about coming to life. It's been plugged in for a while now, nothing's smoked, nothing's blown up, nothing shows any signs of overheating. Do not do what uh, UXW Bill does and touch things inside a live electrically connected device, especially a high power device such as an uninterruptible power supply. But now it's time for the moment of truth everybody. We're going to see if this poor, forgotten thing can live again. It would certainly be nice if it did, because these smart UPS models are pretty good stuff. Sure, they can overheat, and you can overwork them like any other, and they wear out their batteries after a couple of years, and their charging circuits are just like their simpler brethren. Sometimes they tend to get a little uh, carried away with what they're doing to charge the batteries. But all in all, they are a pretty good design. I've only ever seen one blow up, and I think it was due to a design defect that I probably could have repaired had I known about it back in the day. But enough of my yakking. Let's see what this thing does. Ooh, that doesn't sound happy. I don't really think it's supposed to do that. I read the book and it says you're supposed to hold the power button down for about a second, but it doesn't say anything about the unit emitting a painful squeal. All right, folks, I guess I better just screw up my courage and see what happens here. If it blows up, it blows up. Que sera, sera. Carpe diem. <laughs> and smoke test! <laughs> Something happened. I think it's alive. Certainly thinking about doing something. All right, I can hear the inverter running. The gentle hiss of the uh, coils and such as they're driven by the power transistors. All right, let's get something that uh, represents a load here and just see if this thing can pull it. See if it makes that painful sounding squeal again. Got this little preheat style fluorescent lamp. This is about as simple and low current draw of a load as anyone could imagine. So even if this thing's in pretty sad shape, I don't imagine it should have a problem with that. Boy, these outlets, they're so new and so tight. <laughs> it's just amazing. And equally amazing is this guy. Squaw! What are you doing out here, Furhead? Getting clothes. Getting clothes. What are you doing? What, what are clothes doing in the garage? In the Jeep. In the Jeep, okay. Man, you got so much crap here now. Yeah, I got some stuff to liquidate and things like that, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'll have it out of here soon. I know. Gosh. It's terrible. You know, this thing does have... There we go. Backlight compensation. What? Yeah, now people can see your face. What? Which is probably going to result in damaged video equipment. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Furhead has been successful in his goal of uh, totally distracting me from what I was doing there. Score! Anyway, I've got a small load on this long-forgotten smart UPS. Let's just see what it does here, folks. Okay, I guess maybe it is supposed to make that painful-sounding shrill. I do that every 
good morning too. <laughs> you haven't been sitting in your box for 20 years. <laughs> well, 21 years. Poop, I think everybody makes that noise. Well, the inverter's running, and the light hasn't blown up yet. I can make it blow up. So I think this thing might well live to tell about it. Just got to get some fresh batteries. This is how college kids do laundry, right? They just hold it out in the rain. <laughs> just before I fell victim to a drive-by fur heading and forgot what I wanted to do, there was another test that I had in mind to perform against the old smart UPS that has recently been re-enlivened. I have a scope meter here hooked up to the power outlets on this tested and verified working APC Smart UPS 1500. And what we're going to see here when I turn the power on, first we'll see the power line waveform, and then we will see the output waveform that is generated by this unit's inverter. It is a true sine wave unit, so there will be very little difference. In fact, the output from the Smart UPS is actually nominally better than that of my AC power line most times of the day. I've noticed that there's a little bit of flat topping on the waveform that comes in from the power line. It tends to get better at night, but then again it would because the load on the power line and the grid itself is quite a bit lower. This is, of course, a dangerous thing to do, so if you don't understand the safety ramifications, do not attempt this. Here we go. There's the AC power line waveform. And here is that of the inverter. And now we're back to the AC power line. And again, you can see the peaks are just a little bit flatter and squarer than those coming from the inverter on the Smart UPS. Now let's go see how the 21-year-old unit compares. See if it's in good fighting trim or not. Now that I've made my way back out to the garage, I've set up some dummy loads here in the form of some lamps. This one's fluorescent, and this one's a 34-some-odd watt incandescent. I know they're not a perfect match to one another, which might skew the results of what you're about to see in some minorly significant way or another, but they are, however, the best I could find, and I think their power draw should be pretty close to one another. Anyway, moving on down here, we have... Contestant number one, the APC Smart UPS 600. And then we have something that would be a lot more like what you would find at the average computer parts or office store where uninterruptible power supplies are sold. This is the kind of thing they would hand you in all likelihood if you walked in and asked for one. They probably don't carry anything. Most of them certainly don't carry, any, carry anything as nice as this Smart UPS over here with its true sine wave output. That's the key difference between these two in addition to build quality and the fact that this one was made in the United States and this one I believe was made somewhere overseas. I'm not 100% sure because it's been a while since I've looked. But this one will likely be capable of operating longer. In fact, APC actually sells some models that are capable of extended runtime with additional battery boxes. They're a little heavier than this one though because it's not designed for that. You could modify it though, add a fan and some other things. But getting back to the subject of the video, this unit outputs when it's operating on battery what is called a modified sine wave by the marketers or a stepped approximation to a sine wave which is a little bit closer to reality as far as the description goes. Basically this is a square wave output with periodic drops to zero amplitude as the waveform heads past the crossing point. And just to demonstrate that, I actually have not one but two scope meters going here right now. They're both showing you what is happening on the AC power line. But in just a moment OMG, we're going to have power failure. Now, the batteries in this one aren't the strongest, so it may poop out on me. I don't know. But let's just see what this one does, and then we'll compare it to the other one. Here we go. Haven't heard any alarms yet. Oh, yeah, there we go. I don't know that I can get this one to shut up. But here, as we can see, the Smart UPS 600 is giving an exceptional account of itself. Very nice-looking output waveform there. And yet over here, <laughs> this isn't as terrible as it could be. It's certainly not the worst I've seen by far and away. And most equipment wouldn't mind running from this, but some highly inductive loads, like certain types of motors, they would overheat in short order. Be quiet. <laughs> or not achieve their full running speed or have other various and assorted problems. 
Also see there's a little tiny bit of ringing going on here at the peaks of the waveforms. That would probably change somewhat as the load shifted around and it would also vary somewhat depending upon the condition of the battery. But here you can see why the APC Smart UPS costs so much more and isn't as readily found. Many people don't need them, but if you wanted to run something that wasn't a computer or a computer power supply with active power factor correction that's sensitive to waveform shape, this is what you would want by far and away. And after all of these years, it seems to be in exceptional working order. In fact, we'll just go ahead and cut over to the uh, utility power once again. And you can see the wave shape changes very, very little. But this one has gone back to being a proper sine wave. And here, just for the heck of it, also somewhat by suggestion from fellow YouTuber FF Kosseg, here is the Smart UPS 600 about to power a computer. Yes, this computer is still sitting out here in the garage, hasn't managed to move in. <laughs> Here's a look at the output waveform running from utility power and BAM! The lights are out! And now it's carrying the load of the computer all by itself. Now the manual says we can get an approximation of the load by holding down the test button. Whether or not that's actually true when we're running from battery, I don't know. But the first two LEDs at the bottom have illuminated and that supposedly indicates around 150 watt load per the user's manual. So it seems that this UPS is in good fighting trim once again. Now I just have to put it all back together. And no, there's not going to be a video about that. Although it seemed to be nothing less than a surefire way to waste some time, I did invest a little bit of time and effort to see if these 1994 era batteries might come back to life even with greatly reduced capacity. And the answer is, no, they definitely did not. One of them is in much better shape than the other, but they're just both completely shot at this point and I really did not expect anything different to be the case. So in case you were wondering about that, well now you know. And from the department of stuff that people in all probability do not even care slightly about, I decided to go ahead and see what would happen if I hooked up a smart slot accessory in an external enclosure to this Smart UPS 600. It does power up and it does come online, but the firmware in the card seems not to know what to make of the situation that it's in, or the uninterruptible power supply simply doesn't communicate in a way that the card expects. I expect that the compatibility issues are most likely a mixture of both hardware and software issues. In particular, the UPS itself does not behave properly with the smart slot enclosure attached to it and a smart slot card present in said enclosure. I'm guessing that some pins on the serial port are being driven inappropriately or to incorrect levels, thus resulting in erratic operation. For example, it is impossible to turn the Smart UPS off with the external accessory attached. It will just reboot itself and start over again with its self-test as though someone had just turned it on. You can see anything crossing the road here. <laughs> Just amazing. So as always everyone, thank you for watching and what should they do? Keep their pickle in the fridge? No. They should leave a video comment. Oh, keep their stick on the ice! No, but I'll, I'll take that. That's better than it was. Keep their pickle in the fridge. <laughs> he's, he's out there somewhere, folks. Oh, I'm everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere we want to be. Are you, the, are you the visa of the human set? Is that what you are? I mean, I do have a passport. <laughs> <laughs> did you, can you believe they give him one of those? Well, they did. <laughs> I'm going to terrorize the country. No, you shouldn't admit to that on videotape. The NSA will be all over you. Like a cheap suit, which is the only kind of suit you'd probably ever wear. Although I have seen Furhead in a suit. He cleans up real good, I gotta tell yeah. you. You'd be surprised. <laughs> no, pardon me. I have to swing line right along. All righty, see you later, Furhead. That's going to do it for the video, everybody. Have a great day. You're probably having a better one after a little bit of Furhead humor there. It's a pretty good day for this smart UPS as well. So thank you for watching. And feel free to leave a comment while Furhead messes around with my hassock. I wasn't joking, folks. The weather held just long enough for me to make the video. <laughs> now it's raining. Welcome to Illinois. If you don't like the weather, 
You may not even have to wait 15 minutes. <laughs>